There's many things that a merchant needs to consider when they want to expand into a new market, a new country. Um, from a payments perspective, you need to be considering uh, the right types of payments, localization, um, and also a, a, a properly planned out fraud strategy. When you're looking to go into a new market, uh, you, 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 you've got kind of several different options. You can either try and put a local entity in, which obviously has a very high cost, um, which will allow you to present yourself in a local currency and as a local presence. Another way the merchants are doing it is to, to do what we call cross-border. And they use services like uh, DCC, which is dynamic currency conversion, or MCP, which is uh, multi-currency pricing. And what those tools do is they allow you to present yourself in a local currency without actually being in that country or region, but then settle back into your base currency. First consideration from a merchant is usually to localize their sites. Um, and they do a very good job of that. If you don't localize um, your checkout page appropriately, then you can undo all the good work you've already done. If I give you an example that in, uh, in some of the Latin American countries, naming conventions may have five or six components, which you can't always tell which one is the first and the last name. If your checkout page isn't able to accommodate that, or even worse, if your payment provider isn't able to recognize and accommodate and handle that many, uh, that many naming components, then it can cause all sorts of difficulties and actually cause abandonment and even worse, failed transactions. In my opinion, when you're looking at what payment types to have on a, on a checkout page, you have to really be considering, is the payment type that's there going to either provide you with incremental sales or encourage customers to actually spend more? If it doesn't do one of those two things, then all you're doing is diluting the offering that you actually have on your checkout page. What we have seen is that any more than about four or five payment types on a checkout page starts to have a detrimental effect on conversion. A properly planned out fraud strategy is an absolute essential when looking to go into a new market. Um, there, are, there are two factors that you need to consider. First of all, your fraud product or the fraud service that you're using needs to have relevant data to the country that you're going into or the region that you're going into, and it must also have the necessary experience and expertise around the local trends within that country. If I give you an example of um, if you're a business and you've been trading in the US or in Europe where it's culturally acceptable for um, somebody to have multiple credit cards. So you may have one email address and one person associated with multiple different cards. If you take that example and then put it into the Indian market and expect it to, to work, you're going to have a shock. The reality is, in the Indian market, it's very usual for families to share one credit card. And there have even been examples where if you have a credit card, you become the neighborhood travel agent. So you can't just assume that your fraud strategy that you're, you're comfortable with from your traditional markets is going to translate. Working with a provider who has that local expertise and the relevant data is going to help you to find the unusual behavior and give you peace of mind when going into a new market.